Hey everyone, it's time to design another stencil holder. So some of you will remember this. I made a video about putting this together. It's my stencil holder for my Tiny Pico. It allows me to put a Tiny Pico in place here. I keep this here just to clean the stencils with. It's just an old Tiny Pico board. But I can place a Tiny Pico board in here. I've got some tape to hold a board in place if it needs a little bit of extra reinforcement to stay still. And yeah, this has been working great. I've uh, been making stacks of Tiny Picos with this stencil holder and it's everything I wanted it to be. I can make slight adjustments to the stencil position and then obviously I can take the tape up, put it down, hold things in place, can even lock it down if I want to. It's really easy to use, very happy with it. It's definitely sped up my stenciling and the quality of my stenciling has improved a lot. But when I build a Tiny Pico, I also have to put the RAM on the back. And I've been hand soldering the RAM, which has been fine. I think I'm doing a pretty neat job of it, but it just takes some extra time. And I thought, how cool would it be if I just stenciled the RAM as well? So I got myself a new stencil, just a little small stencil. And it's got the JST connector on the back as well, because you can't really be selective on what parts you include and don't include on the back of a stencil. And I'm going to design another frame to hold this so I can stencil the RAM on the back as well. Now I have to be a bit careful. I need to design a base that can hold a built Tiny Pico. So I have to be careful of the antenna. I don't want to bend the antenna in any way. And it's got to hold it all in place and let it sit flush so I can put paste on and then I'll need some type of jig for hot airing the RAM on. So let's jump into Fusion 360 and design up a new base. Okay, we've got a base. I think I've had some humidity or moisture get into the filament. You can see there's some funky looking visuals on it, but it's okay. It'll do for what we need. I might have to give it a slight sand, but I don't think so. I think it'll be fine. So I've got a base. Now I'm going to use an old top that I printed a while ago when I was experimenting with the different frames. And this particular frame is slightly the wrong size for this stencil. As you can see the stencil is a bit small for it so you, I'm not going to be able to tape it on the sides like I normally do. That's okay, I'll work out a way of, of taping it together. I'll tape it down on the inside because I don't need a lot of clearance. That's fine, I didn't want to waste a whole bunch more filament and have to wait another two or three hours to get one of these printed. So that's cool. Now I need to cut some more of this fiberglass rod that I used last time. It's pretty you know, strong, flexible. It um, It's used for the hinge that goes through, oh, you see there, to do the, the flap. So I think it's about 140 mils that I need. About 140, I think, about there. Okay, so let's cut it. Excellent. Now we have a short bit of rod. Let's get it all together. Assuming that it fits. Yes, it does. Cool. So, squeeze this in place. It might be a bit tight. I haven't sanded it or anything. It might be okay. Let's find out. Tight. 
tolerances should be the same as last time. Ooh, that might be a bit tight. Yeah, that's going to be maybe too tight. Yeah, I might have to sand this back. So let's get this back out again. And I'm going to grab something to sand this back a little bit. Back in a second. So I ended up just using a file, just to file it down a little bit. I think it was the easiest thing. So this should be a little bit easier to get in. Tiny little bit. I still don't know if it'll be loose enough, but we'll find out. It could also be that the tolerances on the top is just not okay. One of the reasons I might have reprinted it. Okay, it's a bit better. It's tight, but it'll come loose. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. Now, what we didn't check was, does the Tiny Pico fit in there? Here's a brand new fresh Tiny Pico that has no RAM on the back. So let's see how it fits. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Perfect. And to get it out again, I just get my tweezers and I can just carefully from the edge, pop it. There we go. So that works. Let me just put it back in and check the other side for clearance. Yeah, that looks okay. USB, a little bit tight on the USB just here. Maybe I could probably file that back. Plenty of room around the antenna. Lots of room, we've got about a mil before it hits the bottom. Very happy with that. It's a little bit wonky. This top piece, that's okay. I'll hold it in place when I stencil. So I'll be taping the stencil from the other side, from the inside here, I think. Luckily, it's nowhere near as fine pitch as what the top side is. So it just needs to be pretty close. Shouldn't take a lot to hold this down and in place. That looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna tape it here. And There. Let's get this side on. Peel it off the side a bit. And just tape that under. Why is that not going flat? So maybe there's something wrong with this top piece. I might have to reprint it. That's okay. For now, I mean, I can just hold it in place like this. Okay, so we're going to need a jig now for hot airing. I'm not going to do these in the oven, I'll just hot air them. I don't want to have to build a, a jig that these can go in and back into the oven in case I knock them in any way. So here's a second ball that I built. I'm going to need just some PCBs that are taped together that'll lift this off and hold it in place. The hot air gun so nothing will move. So let's uh, work on that now. Okay, I'm going to use some old Tiny Pico display shields because I've got the new version coming that has the, instead of the piezo, it's got the magnetic buzzer with the amplifier on it as well to get really good sound out of it. So these are not being used anymore and I am going to build a jig that'll hold Tiny Pico in place. So, how is that going to go? Okay, that can't fall through. Perfect. And it's very loose. I think it's time to give this a whirl. So, I will get some paste, I will get some RAM, and we'll try it out. Okay, so I've got one in here. I'm definitely going to have to fix this. This is a bit tight. That's okay. But for now, let's try it out. So, I've got one here, and I've got another one ready to go. I'm going to do two. I'm going to hot air both at the same time. I've got my cork, I've got my jig, and I've got some ram just up there. So I'm going to take them from stencil and put them directly on here. Okay, let's go. Yeah, this is definitely not sitting down very well. That's okay. Paste. We don't need a lot. 
In fact, we need a very little bit. And I was going to tape up the JST, but I'm just going to see if I can stencil without actually hitting the JST. So what I might do is put some paste on the card. Oh, that might not work. I was going to say and then do it the other way around. I'm not going to get to see what I'm doing. Oh well. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I don't think... Yeah, actually, that worked. Ish, I guess. So let's take that off. Yeah, look at that. Perfect. Let's get board out. Okay, one. We'll go again. Get some more paste on. Okay, might have got a tiny little bit on the JST in the corner. I don't know. No, I think that's good. Excellent. So, get that out. Move the stencil away. Okay. Let's get the RAM on, and then we will hot air it. I can get it on under the camera. No pressure. Two bits of RAM. Hot air time. So for the jet engine noise, here we go. We don't want to blow it away. It's going to get too close. And it may move. Just going to warm them up. Okay, there it goes. It's pretty good. I think we are done. I'm being a bit overcautious right now just with the hot airing because I can't really get close enough to see. I would normally do this under my magnifying glass. Okay. Hot air is away and now we just need to let them cool down. Unfortunately I can't stick them on a heatsink because there's components on both sides. But I think, I think we're going to be good. Nice and neat. So the question is is this process going to be faster than me hand soldering? That is a really good question, and I do not know the answer to that one until I've done a few more. But at least I have a stencil holder ready to go, and uh, that's quite a nice job. If I do say so myself. Excellent. Okay, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like what you see. Thank you to all my patrons, you are all amazing, I really appreciate your generosity, and until next time, I will catch you all later. Bye.